y'all welcome to let's chat with denisha how are you doing today i hope you are okay if if this is the first time you are tuning into this channel welcome and i'm gonna ask you to please go ahead like share and subscribe to my channel and click that notification bell so that when my videos are out you will be the first to get notified this channel is about life where I address life issues and we can just relax and chat about life. <laughs> this part of my life I just really want to share with you because I know that, you know, um, it can it can impact you, um, you know, in a positive way. All right. So, I was born and raised in one of the most volatile cities in jamaica um in the parish of saint catherine and we all know how saint catherine can be especially in the town and the pen area so i was born and raised in one of the pens all right all you jamaicans you know what i'm talking about in terms of pens and all of that we know that the ghetto or the garrisons are called the pens and there is a stigma that is attached to it. I never come from a wealthy family, a family of four. And um, just happened that my dad, you know, I, I was, you know, I have a different dad from, from the other three. But I never felt as if my stepdad was really a stepdad but a father. So I was the fortunate one to have two fathers and then i was a part of a church where my bishop oh my god i love him where my bishop was also a father figure to me and all the other men in the church and i will not call names because i don't want to be stoned <laughs> but i had men in my life that were men in my life who were father figures all right so starting out you know I went to, and, and yeah, my father played, you know, his role in my life in providing in the best way he knew how to and communicated with me in the best way he knew how to. But um, he migrated when I was, in my early years, he migrated. And so it was just like phone calls or when he traveled in the summer or all of that. And I'll talk to you about that some other time. So my journey started out, started school at two years old. Ah! <laughs> well, I was known to be the feisty one. Very polite, but feisty. And, um, you know, very smart too. Then I went on to the primary school. And then I went to a traditional high school. And I can say the St. Catherine High School. Woo! Each one holds you as a mother, sister, teacher, students all. Loyally we stand together. Ever ready at your call. Listen, 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 listen. I love St. Catherine High. I'm sorry, but I love it. So I went to St. Catherine High there. I did the sciences. I didn't move on to to um sixth form. So I graduated in the 10th. I graduated 11th grade. Oh, it was so long ago. I graduated 11th grade. I got some of my subjects. And then I went on to extension where I where you know i did um i did over some of the subjects that i didn't pass um in school i was not that type of student and my classmates they can attest to this i wasn't the type of students who who you know skipped class and you know was you know you're not gonna find me on the corridor um you know just i was that average student i wasn't brilliant i wasn't bright and i wasn't slow or what i was just an average student and um i really worked hard on 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 my cxc's but i didn't pass all of them and so my mother knew that i was always studying i was always hitting the books she was one who did not have to tell adenisha diani jarry to say hey go and pick up your book 
You know other than when we're playing or what and we're giving trouble in here. Go take up your book, girl. Go take up your book. Anyways, um, so um, you know, my mom played a very important role in in, in, in growing us, you know, and uh, yeah. And so when I didn't pass all my CXCs, I went on to an extension. I don't think that school still exists, but I went on to the extension and then from the extension um i went to work but the, here it was my plan was i want to become a medical doctor and so i did all the sciences in school i struggled a bit but i was a hard-working student i tried to stay focused after the extension you know as i said my dream was to become the doctor so i got all the sciences and then I realized that, <laughs> I don't remember, incident happened where I had to go to the doctor. And that was when I realized that I had a fear for blood or a phobia for blood and needles. And up to today, a big old tough me still cannot manage the sight of needles. I'll always look away. And I'm like, you know what? So the doctor thing won't work out. I just know that I always wanted to help people. And as a child growing up, I would play in Dolly House. I was always the little leader. I was always the teacher or always the one preaching or I was always the doctor. So there was this whole thing from that early age and, you know, just to help people. And so the next, the, the thing that I knew, you know, I know that doctors, it, the, the, the medical profession is a prestigious profession, especially in Jamaica. And I guess everywhere. And so I'm like, you know what, doctor it is that I want. I wasn't thinking, you know, about my family's finance at that time. And so my mom told me that, you know, she doesn't have the money for me to go to college. So um, why not think about working and then I save up the money and then go to college. So that was the plan. I did not plan for that. My plan was after graduating from high school, I would go on to college, medical doctor, and then I start my practice because all I want to do is to help people and to help my family. But what I can say is God knew differently, you know, and I believe that up to today, God has been orchestrating my life. I think it's C.S. Lewis who said, the world is so much bigger than I thought. I thought we went along paths, but it seems there are no paths. The going itself is a path. And so that speaks a lot to me because I thought I was going along a particular path. You know, I had my plans like this is what I want to do. This is what I want to become. But God had different a different plan for me or different plans for me. I after finishing um the extension I got an opportunity to, to work at one of the biggest company then and still now in Jamaica and I was quality inspector at that company so you know um I was somewhat using the sciences and having a science background I was able to function in that capacity and then that was when the desire grew to say, you know what? I want to do more. I really want to do more and that is impacting lives. And it was from that time, um, I'm like, since as I can't handle needle, the sight of needle, since as I can't deal with blood, I, the next best thing in the medical field is to become a radiologist. I went ahead, I applied, and so they were waiting on, I think, was my chemistry, um, my chemistry results. And so I went ahead, I don't remember which institution I applied, whether it was UWE or UTIC, and I applied to do the radiology. I got the pre-acceptance letter, so I was so excited. Again, my mother told me she really didn't have the money. My father, on the other hand, may God rest his soul in peace. He wanted me to go into the army. So he thinks that Jamaican army is the same thing as army in the state. So he always wanted me to go into the army. And he said that he would have my, I will have his full support if I go into the army. Because in the army there's a lot of benefits. So you know what, you know parents. Parents have their type of dream for their child. And, um, and all they want is just the best for us. But I had my other plans. And 
when I got the when I got the science, this is this is the heat of it now. So I got the science, I got the chemistry sent in my result, and I was waiting now on them now to to you know to get the acceptance letter, to get the voucher, to go pay the school fee and all. By this time, I was kind of saving and everything as I started the job, but no money was really there like that for school and I was going to apply for scholarship and everything like that knowing that my mom really didn't have it because she did her best with all of us um I remember one day I was it was Yui I'd applied to Yui thank you lord so I applied to Yui so I remember one day I was at home and I was supposed to call the um, the office the, or the radiology department or something like that. I was supposed to call them, you know, to follow up on some documents that I was supposed to get. And back then we used directory. We used directory a lot back then. And we had house phone, no cell phone, but house phone like that, which was, which was cheaper. And yeah, because we didn't have cell phone. My first cell phone was Nokia 10. Turn up, 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 turn up. No, that's Pink Panther. I don't remember, but you you guys know Nokia phone and we used to play with the snake and the ringtone and all of that. Nokia 10. That was the first phone that I had. But anyways, it was way cheaper to use a house phone. And so I um opened the directory to look for that department. As clear as day, I kid you not, as clear as day, I heard, skip to J. I'm like, skip to J? You don't understand that? I started turning the pages and I'm like, right now I feel like an idiot because what am I looking for? Go down to Jamaica. And I started looking. I said, okay then. Lord, what am I looking for? Is this a job that you want me to call? What, what? It says, go on, go on. And my hand, my finger was going down. And then I reached Jamaica, this Jamaica, that, whatever, whatever. And then the whole process stopped. When I stopped, I stopped at Jamaica Theological Seminary. <laughs> Stay tuned for part two.